Now in the last video, we have looked at what are ionic equations and the steps involved in converting a chemical equation into an ionic equation. Now the process of converting a chemical equation to an ionic equation is pretty tedious and rather intimidating. But the good news is this, that ionic equations are typically written for selected types of reactions. And for these types of reactions, there are there are actually shortcuts to writing the ionic equations, meaning there's no need for you to go through the very elaborate process of um, converting a chemical equation to an ionic equation. Now, these are four types of reactions where there are shortcuts to writing the ionic equations. We are going to look at them uh, one by one. The first type of reaction are neutralization reactions. Just to recap, neutralization reaction is one where an acid reacts with an alkali to form salt and water. Now, regardless of which acid reacts with, with which alkali, the ionic equation is always the same. Okay? Recall that ionic equations, they showcase the actual ions that are undergoing reaction. So when an acid reacts with an alkali, the ion that's undergoing reaction in an acid. If you can recall, an acid is one that produces hydrogen ions and an alkali is one that produces hydroxide ions in aqueous solutions. Okay, so in a neutralization reaction, the ionic equation is always H plus plus OH minus to give water. Okay, so regardless, once again, what acid or which alkali is undergoing reaction, the ionic equation is always the same. Now at this point, I would also want to point out a key difference between chemical and ionic equations. If you take a look at the chemical equations given in this example, you will find that chemical equations do not contain any charged species. Meaning, if you were to write a chemical equation and somewhere in your chemical equation, you find yourself having to write a charge, an ion, right? It means that your chemical equation is wrong, okay? The only equations that would contain ions are ionic equations. The second type of reaction that we're going to look at is known as precipitation reaction. So what are precipitation reactions? Precipitation reactions are those where you mix two solutions which gives rise to an insoluble salt. We see this in two chapters. One would be salt preparation where we look at the preparation of insoluble salts where we make use of the precipitation method. The second chapter where we find precipitation reactions would be in qualitative analysis. Um, for in the chapter, we learn that the positive test for the detection of many ions include the formation of a precipitate. So very often, you will be asked to write the ionic equation for this particular precipitate. Now, once again, there is a shortcut to writing the ionic equations for precipitation reactions, and the shortcut goes like this. In any precipitation reaction, there will be an insoluble salt or insoluble solid being formed. So step number one is to write down the insoluble salt that is being formed. Okay, the fact that it's insoluble would mean that it is in solid state. So in this case, I'm going to first write down the formula of the insoluble salt in the product. Next, you need to ask yourself, what are the ions that make up this salt? Okay, so for example, for silver chloride, it is made up of silver ions and chloride ions. For barium sulfate, it is made up of Ba2+, barium ions and sulfate ions. And for lead 2 chloride, it is made up of lead ion and 2 chloride ions. Now, by the definition of precipitation reactions being the mixing of two solutions, all your ions would be in aqueous states. 
So once again, in writing the ionic equation for precipitation reactions, the shortcut is as follows. You simply write down the formula of the insoluble salt in the product and then you write the ions that make up this insoluble salt in the reactant. The next type of reaction that we're going to look at is known as metal displacement reaction. In the chapter of metals, we have learned that a more reactive metal can displace a less reactive one from its salt solution. So to write the ionic equation for such a type of reaction, that's also a shortcut and the shortcut goes something like this. So we first write down the more reactive metal plus the ion of the less reactive metal in the reactant. And in the product, we have the less reactive metal plus the ion of the more reactive metal. So using the example given, the three examples, this is what I'm going to do. In the first reaction, so the more reactive metal is zinc plus the ion of the less reactive metal, which is silver, it will give me the less reactive metal, which is silver, and the ion of the, less, of the more reactive metal, which is zinc. Okay, so at this point, it will be important for you to know the charge on the respective metal ions, which we can usually tell from the group number or in the case of silver and zinc, you just have to memorize. Okay. Now this equation is not complete yet because um, if we just look at the number of atoms of each element, it seems to be complete. But for any ionic equation other than um, that the atoms must be balanced, the charges must be balanced as well. So if we look at the reactants here, um, the reactants have a total charge of 1 plus and the products have a total charge of 2 plus so this means that the charges are not balanced and how do we balance then we need to put a 2 in front of your silver ion that would bring the total charge in the reactants to 2 plus and now the charges are balanced but the number of atoms of silver needs to be further balanced so now this is the ionic equation for the first metal displacement reaction. Now if we look at the second one, the same rule apply. The, we write down the more reactive metal plus the ion of the less reactive metal, which will give us the less reactive metal plus the ion of the more reactive metal. So in this case, if we look at it, the charges are balanced on both sides. So this is already the answer, uh, the ionic equation for the reaction. Now for the last one, one la for one last time, the more reactive metal plus the ion of the less reactive metal, it will produce the less reactive metal plus the ion of the more reactive metal. So again, the charges are balanced. So this is the ion equation for the last reaction. Another thing that I want to point out is that um, if you are given the chemical equation for the metal displacement reaction, we can actually know the charge on the metal ion by looking at the formula of the compound as well. For example, if we look at silver nitrate, okay, at this point, you should have already memorized that nitrate is NO3 minus. So the fact that the formula of silver nitrate is AgNO3, it means that Ag must be uh, must have a charge of one plus. Okay. Similarly, if you don't know the charge on lead ion, we if you look at the formula, nitrate is NO3 minus, and the formula of lead two nitrate um, consists of two nitrate ions so lead must be pb2 plus the last type of reaction that we're going to look at would be your halogen displacement reactions they are very similar to your metal displacement uh, reactions in a chapter of periodic table we learned that um, halogens undergo this type of reaction where a more reactive halogen will displace a less reactive one 
from its halide salt. So the writing of the ionic equation for such a reaction is very similar to your metal displacement where we have the more reactive halogen plus the ion of the less reactive halogen giving your less reactive halogen plus the ion of the more reactive halogen. Once again, I'm going to illustrate how to write it. So in the first reaction, we have chlorine displacing bromide from sodium bromide. So the ionic equation goes like this, the more reactive halogen plus the ion of the less reactive halogen, which is bromide. It will give us the less reactive halogen plus the ion of the more reactive halogen. Okay, so recall when we talk about more reactive halogens and less reactive halogens, we are talking about the element itself. So halogens exist as diatomic molecules. And then when we talk about ions of the less or more reactive halogens, we are talking about halides. Halides, um, halogen atoms need one electron to have a fully filled valence shell. So it will have the formula of X minus, X being the symbol of a halogen. Now if we look at the equation that we have already written, once again the charges are not balanced. You can also tell that the charges are not balanced because from the chemical equations, there is a 2 in front of bromide, there's a 2 in front of chloride. And once you add in the coefficients, you should find that the charges now balance. For halogen displacement ionic equations, how do we know the state? of your halogens, you need to firstly memorize because in the chapter of periodic table, we are supposed to memorize the states of your um, different halogens. Otherwise, it would be given, usually given in the question as well. So for the second halogen displacement reaction, I'm going to write the ionic equation following the heck again. The more reactive halogen plus the ion of the less reactive halogen will give me the less reactive halogen plus the ion of the more reactive halogen. Okay, and once again, we need to balance the charges by adding the uh, coefficients in front of iodide and bromide. So what we have seen in this video is that there are shortcuts to writing the ionic equations to certain types of reactions, namely um, neutralization, precipitation, metal displacement, and halogen displacement. So when you encounter questions um, of this type of reactions and you're asked to write the ionic equations, instead of going through the entire process of converting a chemical equation to a, an ionic equation, you can actually quickly write out the ionic equations if you can remember the heck.